Hi guys, so in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the smart repair on this Ford Ranger pickup truck. The first thing that we're going to do is just put a little tiny little bit of edge masking on the edge of this decal that's on the bottom of the door because the customer doesn't want this decal removing so we're just going to clear coat over that after we've done this little blow in in the centre of the two doors. So we're just going to very gently put a tiny little bit of mask around the edge there just to stop any overspray from landing on that sticker and obviously leaving any staining on that graphic before we come to do the clear coat stage. Now we've already done the repair, we've already obviously edge masked all this out and we've already grey scotched this whole bottom section and then we've masked it up just above the swage line. Now along the swage line I'm just going to use a little tiny little bit of the soft edge foam just along that top edge of that swage line so that when we clear coat it we'll end up with a nice little feathered edge that we can polish off and I have left the polishing stage in this video as well so you can see how we go about polishing this tiny little clear blend on the bottom of these doors along this swage line area just to give you guys a bit more of information and an insight on how we would go about doing a little clear blend on in a body shop environment like this. Now obviously although this is a smart repair, smart repairs aren't something that we do massively in the shop, we're just trying to keep the cost down for this customer on this vehicle because it's the second time in two weeks that he's managed to have a little bump with this. Now as far as the spray gun goes I'm using my Segola DVR Aqua in a 1.2 XL. Now although it is a full size spray gun, just by turning the fan down a little bit we can turn this into a smart repair size paint gun just by turning the fan down and obviously altering your pressure to suit so that we can blow this bottom of this door in quite nice and quite neat and carefully with this base coat but we don't have to use the full fan of the gun and this is where I've said in previous videos you know it's good to make the gun work for you so we're just going to give this two full coats and then a very light dust and a very small blend coat at the very end um, making sure that we stay clear of where that graphics masked up because we just want to try and stop short of that and with that small fan we want to try and control as well where the paint is going down we don't want it <coughs> we don't want the paint to hit that soft foam and we also don't want to be painting solidly up to where the x on the end of the well the k on the end of the wild track sorry is masked up we want to keep things nice and tight and nice and neat and nice and controlled so we can just blow this small center section in on the bottom of this door now while i am finishing the base coat i just want to say a big thank you to all the channel members who have joined through the link on our channel and become monthly members to become part of the channel your support does greatly help us as far as being a channel goes each month and help myself as well with the physical running costs of having the YouTube channel every month and I just want to give a special shout out to Dan one of our channel members a customer of mine and also now quite a good friend of mine who has been helping me over this last sort of week or so not only getting all the components together for my new editing PC but also helping me get the editing PC tuned up and set up and up and running and helping me with some troubleshooting if it wasn't for him I wouldn't have this new setup up and running now and it's going to make things a lot easier as far as the channel goes to actually get at least one if not two videos up a week for you guys and it will take a lot of time and a lot of pressure off myself in order to keep up with the editing schedule and also obviously the less time it takes me to edit videos the more videos that I can make for you guys as well so a big shout out to Dan um, for all his help as far as this video go uh, as far as the computer has gone now as you can see there we've just caught that excess base coat um, with that tiny little bit of mask in there that's all it needed because we're using a nice small fan so we're going to tack all this off now and especially make sure that that graphic area has got no overspray that's landed on it give it a real good tack off and then we're going to get around to the clear coat stage now because i have fitted this soft foam right along that edge of the swage line if we keep the gun at a nice straight angle to that panel when we spray the clear down we can clear right up to that and it will leave a nice soft edge what you don't want to be trying to do is paint underneath that so i am firing that straight at it and obviously the soft foam is a cylinder so there will always be that little area that the clear coat won't touch and it will leave a nice little soft edge there. Now there are other options you can use the J-Tape No Blend Edge Tape which is my preferred um, tape 
or foam of choice for a job like this but I just didn't happen to have any in on this day so soft foam is another alternative that you can use if you are careful now this is the second coat of clear coat we're putting on here again same as with clear coat anything else just two very nice wet even coats of clear a nice 50% overlap because we want that nice factory finish we don't want to be putting a 70% overlap and getting a nice really flat wet finish we just want a nice factory finish to this and it's perfectly fine to clear coat over that decal the clear will stick without any issues and we'll have no issues down the line if we do clear coat over that decal obviously your customer needs to be aware that you're going to be clear coating it in because uh, technically in the future you know if they were to remove that decal it is then under a coat of clear now i've just whipped out the booth quickly came my gun out and then I'm using some of the multi-mix fade out thinners and we're just going to spray a tiny little bit of fade out thinners now along where this clear bend was. So my first port of call would be to take off the soft foam edge from along this edge and now obviously between the edge of the clear blend and where the edge of my masking is there will be a little bit of a feathered edge and a little bit of a gap. Now that's where I'm going to be wanting to put this fade out thinners along that edge just to help the new and the old clear melt together that little bit easier. What you don't want to be doing is putting this on now really wet. We want this to be a nice, fine, almost like dust coat. As soon as you see it turn wet, that is enough. If you're putting a wet coat on, I can guarantee you, you are going to alter this clear too much and it will just run straight down the car. So that edge that I'm just pointing out there, has got a very small fan, quite a high pressure and a very light mist going along that edge and we're going to do that i'd probably do this two or three times and in between i will use the air from the spray gun to force dry it that little bit quicker just to avoid the risk of any runs along that edge so here you can see i'm just now using a little bit of air from the gun to flash that fade out thinners off that little bit quicker to reduce the chance of it running I only want this to melt it in, I don't want this to actually start the new clear at the bottom running down the bottom of the car because obviously that would be another big issue to deal with and when you've got a job like this that you're trying to do a nice neat little blow in, the more you can limit the issues and limit the area that you're working to the better. So that's now based and cleared, we've got that little edge now that we've just feathered out and you can see just along there where the edge of that little shiny edge is and that little edge there really on a job like this should be hopefully all you need to flatten polish just to blend that edge in and just to take your eye off that edge and then it'll be a very much a seamless repair now when I polish I do like to leave <coughs> especially little jobs like this masked up and all I'll do is I'll leave all the edge masking on I'll take this bit of masking at the top and I'm going to raise this little bit of masking up. Now what that'll do is it'll give me a tiny little bit more room to work on the top edge where we need to obviously polish, uh, flat and polish that blend out. But what it'll also do is help me keep this vehicle cleaner. So in by leaving the sheet on the car, when I now start flat and polishing, all the water, all the compound residue, everything like that that's going to be flicking up with the polishing process is all going to get caught by the soft foam in the edge of the doors it's going to get caught by the masking tape around the outside and it's going to get caught by the poly sheet on the car this in turn means that the door shuts will not be full of polish they will not be polish sprayed across the car in any other areas it won't be spraying up the sides of the car or anything like that now that tiny little edge there along that swage line is what our main concentration is going to be so we're using the 3M Microfine 2000 wet and dry, we're just using some straight water, um, not soapy water, it's not something that I like to do, I just like to use straight water. Um, and we're going to lightly wet flat the bottom, um, just to make sure that it just matches in that tiny little bit more. And we're just going to give this um, soft edge and this little fade out clear area here. Uh, a nice little flat and polish just to smooth it out and blend it into the rest of the panel now when this is polished this will be a seamless repair that will last you would not be able to tell that this repair has been done down this bottom end I mean yes we did clear over the decal which in an ideal world you prefer not to do but when it 
comes to stuff like this, sometimes your customer will be happy to spend the money to go to the back to the dealership and get a brand new sticker um, so that you can do this without. But when it's a little job like this and it's literally quite, it's a lot more cost effective to do it this way um, for your customer. He's a regular of ours. This is more his work truck. Um, it had quite a harsh smack between those two door edges. So he just wanted something to tidy it up, to straighten the bottoms of those two doors up and obviously to get them painted up and sealed up so they don't start rusting or anything like that because it is quite a new truck. So he just wants this truck looking nice and fresh and new again. <coughs> so we've done along that edge along the top where we put the fade out. We've then give it a very, very light, quick go over on the bottom end. And now we're just gonna get the compound and give this a nice polish up. So for this, I'm using the G3 Premium. Um, it's something that we had left over in the cupboard. So I'm just trying to use this stuff up because primarily we use the Menzerna range these days, but for little jobs and little blowings like this, I use the G3 Premium. We're using a medium compounding head, so it's not a hard head, but it's not a soft head. Um, so it's nice for getting rid of clear blends like this. And we're only using a spot around about the size of a two pound coin for the whole bottom of this door. And all you need to do is approach this like you'd approach clear coat. So nice and slow and steady, a nice good overlap on your polishing. I do like to slightly angle um, the machine polisher. It just gives it a tiny little bit more bite, but without putting too much heat in it. Ideally, you're supposed to run machine polishes flat, but just personal preference of mine, I do like to run it at a slight angle. It does help with the cutting process just that little bit. Now, it'll only take literally a, a minute or two per bottom end to give these a good compound and you can see that I'm focusing more on that blend area to make sure that is really nicely polished in because we're going from older harder paint to the bottom which is softer um, and easier to polish so that clear blend will take a little bit more of a polish than the actual bottom of these doors will but as you can see it's a very quick and easy process and I've left this as a third person view and then on the second door I've put that uh, I've left the polishing stage in on that again from a per first person view um, like a point of view if you will which you will see now so you can see a little bit more on how I'm doing it so again we've just got a two pounds coin size bit of polish on the mop head we're just first going to give that a quick little spread around just to wet the door up and then work that very small amount of polish in you don't need to put an absolute ton of polish on your compounding head because what you'll find is as the compounding head warms up it will get very warm and it will start to clump up on your compounding head um, very quickly and the more that's on there the quicker things are going to heat up and start clumping up and then you'll actually be rolling around on the clumps that are on the pad rather than actually polishing with the cutting compound that's on there and again, we're just nice and slow and steady with a nice overlap. Don't rush it and also don't stay in one area for too long because staying in one area for too long will cause the panel to heat up. And as you cause the panel to heat up, the paint will soften, which will increase your chance of getting rub throughs or burning the fresh paint. And obviously at this stage, when I'm right at the end of finishing this job, I don't want to burn the fresh paint on the panel that we've just put on. And that is about all there is to doing a little smart repair like this, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to be notified of when we have a new upload. So that's it for me for today, guys, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.